Okay, this video I did last night, and, you know, it's really interesting. You start thinking you're going to talk about one thing, and then you start going down a line, and I just kind of follow the enjoyment, you know? <laughs> um, and I find there are a couple of videos, like even the last Rome Part 4 one I did, where I try to s really stick to the outline or whatever, and if I pre-plan it that way... I notice it's really dry. I, I don't know if you can see that, but um, I sense a dryness. And then I'll do one where I think I'm going to say this, but end up saying that. And that's the one, you know. So this one I'm posting, I'm only posting the first half of because I started kind of recapturing or re-encapsulating the parables in Matthew 13 and, and got some more light from them. And that was supposed to be the intro that was going to last a minute. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to post that in the interest of keeping these videos kind of brief. And then I'll wait and follow it up tonight with the second half of that, I guess. Um, I find if I post too many, it becomes overwhelming for people and... I, I can tell because the viewership drops in half for each video. And it's because, look, man, you know, you got your life and there's other YouTube channels and there's, you know, people can't just be sitting around looking at my videos all day. But for some reason, God has allowed me to have the time to do these uh, and provided for all my needs abundantly. Um, you know, I'm just amazed at how God has put all this together. Uh and very thankful. Anyway, here we go. Now I make reference to a great tree in um, these messages and the gist is, you know, Jesus gave us a negative picture of how the kingdom would look in this age. And in Matthew 13, he gave a series of parables. And the key to understanding those parables is the first one, the parable of the sower. And the most important thing to realize in that parable is that if you're going to understand how it relates to the others, there is uh, these birds that come and steal the seed, right? The word that's being sown, the word of the kingdom is being sown into the hearts of men. And there's the four types of soil. And then one of the types, it's like cast on the wayside and the birds come and grab the seed. And he tells us that those birds are Satan and his angels who come to steal the understanding or steal the word of the kingdom when it's not understood. And if you put all the parables, to, parables together and also what Jesus says in general about thieves, um, the way Satan does this is not just to take the word, but to replace it with something. So the people who have the birds coming to steal the seed think they got something and they think it's the gospel it's a leavened gospel meaning that it's been changed subtly the truth it's got the form of the words but the content is is changed that's what leaven does so when leaven enters into kingdom teaching it retains the outward form, meaning the words are all very similar, but the content and the direction and the spirit behind it is satanic. And that is uh, what uh, Jesus is talking about when he talks about the woman who hid the leaven in the three measures of meal. And we're going to eventually talk about who that woman is. Um, but the leavening of the truth of the kingdom by the Satan and his angels who steal the word when it's not understood and replace it with the satanic version that looks so similar to the real thing uh, that produces tares and so now there's wheat and tares and they look the same in this age except now at the time of the harvest it's starting to become manifest which is which is becoming really clear um, now, the leavening and the changing of the nature of the, of the truth that people are holding on to and think is the gospel produces the outward form, 
the visible form of Christi, Christianity or Christendom in this age. And uh, that is likened to a great tree. And once again, you see God planting a mustard seed. And the mustard seed is supposed to produce a mustard bush because everything God plants is after its kind. And I said that he doesn't plant one thing and expect a different kind of fruit. If he's going to plant an orange tree, he wants to see oranges. If he wants a mustard uh, tree or bush, he's going to see, you know, its fruit. He's not expecting it to become something else. But for some reason, this bush, which should be small and good for food, became a great tree whose branches fill the whole earth and the giveaway that this is not something positive is the fact that in the branches of this great tree that fills the whole earth are birds and these birds are lodged into the branches well jesus already told us that the birds are satan and his angels who have come to steal the seed when the word of the kingdom is not understood and replace it with the leavened truth so the branching out and the spreading of the visible form of the kingdom in this age is negative and evil. Jesus told us to expect that. So it, it can come to as a great surprise that the thing that God planted got changed. Now, God still gets what he wants. He is not concerned about this outward husk, this outward form. He's going to judge it. Uh, and he'll deal with it and he's angry but he's not worried about it because it actually produces a kind of suffering environment to by afflicting the genuine sheep it produces pearl so that's the next parable after these is that there's the parable of the pearl the merchant bought this pearl of great price that was at the bottom of the sea and God's looking not at this big outward tree that reaches the heavens and fills the earth. He's looking deep into the sea where nobody else can see. And he sees you and me. <laughs> so God's looking into the sea where he sees you and me. And you know what he says? It's precious. And he's a merchant. And he thought, oh, that's very valuable. And he's going to buy this pearl, which he did with the blood. And this pearl is produced by affliction and becomes an object of adornment and is removed from its place and set as a trophy. You know, that's what pearls are. And they're produced through affliction. And unfortunately, that's just the nature of how we grow. And how we've uh, grown is based on what God sown. And God sowed a seed you know, into our hearts. And it was the word of the kingdom and we actually received it. And the devil didn't get it. But we found ourselves in his systems. And in his systems, we were surrounded by people who had bought leavened truth and swapped the truth of the gospel for the these f false counterfeits that they think are the real thing. And we have the real thing and it's different than what they have. Even though we're all using similar words, and they don't like it. And so we suffer as a result. And that suffering really seems to have shut us down. But really it's pushed us down. And it's pushed us underground and into the sea. Where we are now hidden from their view. But God's looking at us and saying, yeah, this is the reason I bought the whole thing. Is these precious people, this precious pearl of great price that has been afflicted in these systems and buried. I'm going to remove her and make her an object of adornment. And that's us. And uh, then finally after that is the treasure, the treasure, right? He bought a whole field, hid a treasure in it. We're, we're the treasure. And so I mentioned in that other video that God's work on us is hidden in this age. And so he uses this big tree, but not um, for anything they want. No, that he uses it for our transformation and it's our food and we suffered and we struggled and we were confused and bewildered and yet we kept coming to him and kept clinging to the gospel and kept clinging to that good seed he sowed in our heart and we didn't let it go we didn't let the enemy steal it we didn't let the angels replace it and we didn't let the people uh beat it out of us 
but we just clung to our Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on me. And we thought we would have been put out of function. And he said, no, you haven't been put out of function. That affliction is your function right now. And you don't know it, but you're growing into something precious and you're being transformed. And now in this time of harvest, oh, look how different we are. Look how different God's precious treasure is from the weeds and the tares and the constituents of this great tree who are all devouring each other or biting and devouring each other and we want no part of that because it has nothing to do with us and it doesn't match our nature at all you know we've we've come out he says come out of our my people and he pushed us out and the way he did it we may be there physically but we're not there in our heart and we are not there in our nature at all we have come out and I suspect if you're listening to this message right now, you've already come out too. And you're waking up and going, hey, something's different. And yeah, you know what's different? He's coming to get you because you've become something precious. And he wants to put you in the trophy room 